I have received a lot of requests to make a video explaining pass-through damage, uh, also known as death by a thousand cuts, and how to leverage that, how to take advantage of that, what, why is that even a thing. So my video here will try to explain it with as little math as possible. I do not want to do a video about all the math and formula that some people enjoy doing. I think it's a game. We gotta have fun with the game without needing, you know, a degree in math to understand what's going on. So let's keep it simple. Before I jump into pass through, just remember a few things, and there are other videos and blog articles explaining them in detail. Uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, there is a link in the description to another video I made explaining how ship defense works what applies before what and how they stack and whatnot. Uh, for now, all I want to say is deflection in conquerors and defenders, they work against each damage type. So there are six damage types and ships will have deflection or not against each one of them. Deflection also works against each projectile. So when you see a weapon and the weapon has a salvo of one, the damage it does, it's all concentrated in that single pellet. If it has a salvo of 5, the stated damage will be divided by 5. When you're calculating your resistance, your defense, remember, if the damage is coming from turrets, you first cut it in half because most ships attacking your base, if they were well built, will have a 50% turret resistance. You apply that first and then deflection. So if a, if a turret is doing 1000 damage and you have 50% turret resistance, the damage coming through is only 500. So if your deflection is over 500, you win, it goes down to pass through. If your deflection is below 500, you take the difference, whichever is greater. Splash damage has also its tricky mechanics, so there's splash decay when if you have a rocket projectile hitting right at the center of your ship, you will take the full damage, let's say 100,000. If it's not, if, if the, the pebble hit you a bit to the left, a bit to the right, a bit in front of you, you're only, there's some decay the farther you are from the center of the hit. And then there's splash damage reduction, which a lot of conquerors and defenders have, and there are ways you can increase splash damage reduction. So only after that comes deflection. So think of pass through as a minimum damage you will take when the projectile coming at you is weaker than your deflection. To avoid situations where ships would always take zero damage, zero damage, and never take any damage, so they would be unbeatable, Kixai created this little pass-through number, right? And the higher the deflection, the higher the ship's health, the higher that small minimum mandatory damage called pass-through will be. Evasion is still important, so if... Uh, how a turret fires at your ship and it misses, you take zero. You don't take pass through, you just take zero because the, the shot missed you. The whole concept, uh, think of your base as a castle and you got to defend that castle and you have really thick walls and that wall is called deflection. Now, there are two ways an attacker can try to beat your deflection, to tear down your walls. They can come in with a big freaking gun Okay, like a wave motion cannon and just fire at you a massive blast doing 900 billion million Brazilian damage and that will just in a single shot tear down your walls because it's just going to be over your deflection. The pass-through approach is the opposite. It's Now think of like a sling hitting at you. Like one sling will never tear down your castle, but if you have a million slings firing 10 pebbles a second, eventually it will wear down your walls, it will open a hole on your walls if people are all firing at the same point. And that's the principle of pass-through. So if you want to kill by pass-through, you've got to throw as many pebbles as you can from as many sources as you can and as fast as possible. 
That's why I call it death by a thousand cuts. Or you can just picture thousands of bees coming at you. One bee is going to sting you, you just shake it off. A thousand bees sting you, you probably end up in the hospital. And that's the whole idea of pass-through versus the big freaking mega shot that can take 30% of your damage in one hit. I'm going to explain that now by examples, real game examples. The first one, very recent. On the left, we have the new Howitzer 6 turret. And this is how most people set them up. The new special that adds 85% damage. The EM Rail 3 special in the center, which gives a 300% more damage when critical hits happen. And priority targeting that to increase accuracy and to make sure it fires on the weakest ship all the time. So if you have your turret set up that way with an AT transformer giving extra 35% damage and you're surrounded by five fire support two auras, you actually get 3.8 million damage in a single shot. If you want the details, again, if you're watching this on YouTube, in the description, I linked uh, George's article in the Forsaken Cove that actually calculates that damage, how it gets there for you. The base ship has zero ballistic defense. If you add turret resistance, now you're cutting that dam incoming damage by 50% in half. So instead of 3.8 million, you're only taking half as much. Right? Then you add three. MC1 plates, as you see in the picture, and you have 1.8 million ballistic deflection, as you can read in the blueprint. You don't need to do the math. It's just right there under defense. Now, if you get the total damage coming in from, from critical hits only, divide by two because of the turret defense and subtract the deflection, you will still take 75,000 damage. So in this case, it's the big gun trying to kill you by taking out big chunks of your ship's health. Not every hit is critical. Not every hit will hit you because you have some evade. But when a critical hit hits, 75,000 off of your 2.3 million armor. It's still not the end of the world and it's still going to take a whole bunch of those to kill a ship. Okay, so that's why now the turret... People don't like it, but all in all, it's balanced because it does hurt your ships, but it will not single shot kill them anymore. And when you're looking at pass through, very different. You've got to think, will your setup overcome deflection? I'll have one example. On the left, it's how my hope was built initially. Flail rockets. The flare rockets, they, they on that setup with the rocket bonus and whatnot, they were doing 95,000 damage per projectile. With a small chance, 15% of a critical hit, that will do 214,000 damage. What happens is that now it's irrelevant because when you have an onslaught or an, a missile cruiser coming in, they have huge explosive defense you're just dealing 360 which is listed as pass through on the right side there for that ship some other ships will only have 20 100 a lower pass through you gotta read that so that setup which initially was great now it's useless because this rocket is very slow to reload so you're just remember just as link throwing pebbles now and you're throwing them really slowly because you reload every 8 seconds. Even with a special to, to get, give it a buff, it's still slow. Let's look at the next one here. Let me compare. On the left, it's how I had my hope set up. Even without the specials and everything, it was only reloading every 0.6 seconds. Now, you see on the right, a lot of people were refitting their hopes with the Siege Rocket D100S. Why? Because once you take damage out of the equation, you don't care about the damage because it's not going to overcome deflection anyway. All you care about is reload. So with that rocket that reloads every one second, I don't even need the reload special. I can use more, more evade specials if I want, range, whatever. Uh, 
you're getting now pellets thrown at reloading at every 0.2 seconds. So it throws three salvos, both of them have three salvos, one, two, three. On the right, it reloads in two seconds, so it's non-stop firing. It's one, two, three, one, two, three. On the left, the guy's gonna do one, two, three. Pause, nothing. One, two, you know. So that's the difference. Now there's a, a new rocket in FM that it's just like the the one on the right, it reloads every second, but has a longer range of 90. So absolutely use that guy. If you have a hope in defense, that's the rocket you want to use. And the D100S would be a second option. So you see, damage doesn't matter if it doesn't overcome deflection. All that matters is range, reload, and salvo. That's it. Here are a few examples if you're thinking, okay, so what should I put on my guard? Here are some examples. Polonium thrower, great option if you want to put that on the Courage, for instance. Uh, it has a salve of 20, so it fires a lot. And it has a benefit. It lowers the accuracy of your enemy. So if they are coming in with missiles or cannons that depend on accuracy, you're bringing down their accuracy with the Polonium thrower. It's a great weapon to use in defense. Model missile, it... MERVs, so every missile that fires becomes six. So if you have 20 of them on your fleet, you don't have 20. Now you're thinking, okay, it's 20, 20 projectiles times six, it's 120. Uh, torrent missile three, and I only talk about the three because torrent missiles one and two, their damage will be, their base damage will be below 360, so you won't be doing minimum damage. But torrent missile three, even divided by a salvo of 16, it will still be over 360 and has another benefit. It deals two types of damage, penetrative and radioactive. So you're going against two deflections and you're doing that minimum damage twice per shot. So keep your eye open for weapons such as the Torrent Missile 3 or the Pandemonium Mortar I have down there, which can do more than one damage type because now for each projectile they will do twice the minimum pass-through. If you find one that gives three types of damage, we'll give three times the pass-through. So MERVs, like Judgment Mortar, Muddle Missile, High Salvo, like Excalibur Gatling Gun that winds up and gets reloading real fast, or rockets that reload real fast. That's the kind of thing you should look for. I'm not just saying use these seven weapons here. They're just good examples, all right? This is the big combo. This is what you really need. The best way of killing with pass-through is A, you put lockdown rockets in your ships to slow the enemy down. The slower they move, the more, the longer you fire at them. Because right now they can kill your defense as well. So the, the attacker strategy is to pass by your defenders as fast as they can to get to your outpost. So slow them down. And the lockdown rockets, the best weapon, along with some fields, some turrets, some other weapons, anything that slows the enemy down. And on the right, the holy grail of pass-through damage, the chaos chain gun. It gives all six damage types, and it doesn't overcome any of the deflections we can have in game today, because you look at a big number of 150,000, you divide by 15 salvo, we get 10,000. 10,000 in today's game, it's nothing. So don't worry about buffing the damage of the Chaos Chain Gun. You need to buff reload and range. That's what matters. So this guy, every projectile hitting, and there's going to be a bunch of them, will do six times whatever pass-through is listed on your enemy's ship. Here's one example of one sample build guard, a base guard built and optimized for pass-through. It's very high evade, so if your enemy is coming at you with missiles or, or cannons or stuff like that, they will not hit you often. Starts with two D33DR cannons at the bottom to slow the enemy down at not, from a 94 range. So, you know, the moment they get it within that range, they'll be slowed down. Um, one lockdown at range of 68 to slow them down even more. Then six cha uh, chaos chain guns, then all six damage types. If you, that it's the only math I'm gonna do here. So it's six guns, fifteen salvos per gun, 
doing six damage types. So you get 540 pass throughs with every full round they fire. Okay, times 360. I'm not going to do that math, but it's a great way of damaging your enemy. Uh, the range is 100, so actually the missile storm cruiser or the onslaught can still outrange it, but that means they'll have to sit there taking fire from other stuff in your base. So if you position things properly, this is great. They walk in, you slow them down, you fire a lot at, at, at them. They don't walk in, the time is ticking. Okay, and other stuff in your base should be firing at them. It's hard to kill because the pass-through on the Boulder Fist is only 20, so do not put any new armors in it. And you look at my specials, there's absolutely no special there increasing damage. All the specials I'm using are increasing evade, range, uh, field resistance, splash damage reduction, um, that, so you, you, you get the point. It's death by a thousand cuts. It's not death by one big shot. The strategy going for, uh, forward seems to be the turrets will do the big damage, like the Howie or the Executioner 2, and the ships will only slow the enemy down and do pass-through. So you got to optimize for range, salvo, multi-shot, and reload. I hope that helped everybody understand pass-through, the strategy, how to apply it, how to win with it. Have fun. See you next time.